Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. In previous case of video in the part 1, I have explained up to the auricular layer larva and this video is based upon the forms of echinoderma larva and if you people didn't saw that part 1 video, the link will be given in the description box. If you see that video, then you can easily understand this remaining part of the video. So firstly watch that video and then you can come to this video. So coming to the fourth one, Ophiopletus larva. This Ophiopletus larva belongs to the life history of the Opioidae and which is commonly called as brittle star and many long arms will be present and the, and the diagram will be given for you after this explanation and the body of this Ophiopletus larva is transparent okay and this Ophiopletus larva is bilaterally symmetrical it is bilaterally symmetrical and this is a pelagic larva because they exhibit the property of pelagic so what is meant by pelagic I already explained in the previous video Pelagic is nothing but it has a property, I mean you know it has a characteristic which exhibits in such a way that uh, it can escape from the crowded area. For example if you take an area which is very crowded which consists of different species of larvae then what happens is that this larvae has a capacity to escape from that uh, different type of species. So that, ex that property is called as pelagic, hence this exhibits the property of pelagic it is called as pelagic larva. And the ciliated band is undivided okay and the pre oral arms are reduced and the post oral arms are also reduced and here as the pre oral arms and post oral arms are reduced then posterior lateral arms are very long it becomes very long reduced are nothing but they are very short okay so as they are very short the posterior lateral arms become very long so the digestive system is also well developed where it starts from the mouth and ends towards the anus it exhibits the characteristic of free swimming they because uh, because they are ophiopletus larva are, uh, has a capacity of swimming so next to this elementary canal as the digestive system is well developed then the elementary canal has been well developed where it starts from the mouth and ends towards the anus i have said you so it covers the parts of oesophagus stomach and intestine also so now let us see the diagram of the opioplates larva so these both are called as anterior lateral arm so these both are called as posterior dorsal arm so this is known as mouth and these both are called as posterior lateral arm and next this red color one which I have drawn are known as hydrocell which consists of lobes and if you zoom that region then you can easily understand and next this is known as intestine and here this is called as anus and this is known as preoral arms I have said you that preoral arms are very much reduced and the posterior lateral arms are very long I have said you right so these both are known as posterior lateral arms which are very long so this is about the diagram and next I have also said you that the ciliated band is undivided so if you see here properly the diagram this is known as ciliated band okay this total is known as ciliated band and this ciliated band is undivided so here you can easily and you can see the mouth region and esophagus stomach and left stomatocele intestine region pluted rods right stomatocele and then hydrocele also i have said you that the hydrocele which i have said you here which consists of lobes are red in color so here you can uh, properly understand here okay so this is about the ophiopletus larva so now let us learn the next type of larva. Coming to the fifth one, Echinopletus larva. This Echinopletus larva belongs to the life history of Echinoidae, as the name itself indicates that. And it is a microscopic larva in such a way that which cannot be seen through our naked eye, it can be seen only with the help of an electron microscope. And it exhibits the property of free swimming. That's nothing but this Echinopletus larva uh, can swim. And it consists of ciliated bands, and that ciliated bands will get matured. I mean, it will get developed to form the arms. And these arms play a major role in the swimming. And not only the arms in this echinopletus larva the if you take in the if you take the arms of any other uh, forms of larva the main function of that arms is only to perform this swimming property okay and this echinopletus larva consists of four to five pairs of arms and these arms are supported by calcareous rods and these calcareous rods are mainly made up of calcium carbonate CaCO3 and the digestive system is well developed as we know that the digestive system is well developed in the sense that it starts from the mouth and ends towards the anus as the digestive system has been well developed immediately the you know the elementary canals can also has been it well developed okay it develops hydrocele and vestibule at the oral side that's nothing but towards the mouth side and now what happens is that this echinopletus larva undergoes metamorphosis process and then becomes into adult so you know about the metamorphosis process i all i already done a pre big video on this metamorphosis complete discrete complete details of this metamorphosis has been given in that video and the, that link also will be given in the description box so if you see that video then you can easily understand and simply to say about this metamorphosis 
it is a life cycle in such a way that it begins from the egg hatching of the egg occurs and then first stage of the larva will get protruded out and that first stage of larva will get transformed into second stage larva and that second stage larva will get converted into third stage larva and finally it becomes into adult and that process is known as metamorphosis okay and which can be seen in the insects like butterflies also and I have explained in the in fact insects so you can know the just a uh, basic idea on this metamorphosis in that video because I explained in that in the video in the form of insects but here we are discussing about the larvae right so you can easily understand but so this it undergoes metamorphosis process and it becomes into adult so now let us see the diagram of the echinopletus larva so here this will be the diagram of the echinopletus larva and if you see the labels so these are these both are called as preoral arms these both are known as preoral arms and this is known as anterolateral arm so this is known as post oral arm and this is known as esophagus so these both are called as posterior dorsal arm and these rings which i have drawn all of these are known as anterior epaulettes and this is known as stomach and this is known as echinus rudiment and this is known as intestine okay this is known as intestine and next here comes the posterior lateral process and this posterior lateral process is also called as posterior epaulettes okay and this is nothing but posterior epaulettes which i have said you this will be the another name and this is the anus from which the waste material will get excreted out and this will be the diagram of echinopleutus larva coming to the sixth form of the larva which is called as doliolaria larva and this will be the final stage of the larva after this larva what happens is that it will undergo the metamorphosis process in such a way that it becomes into adult so now let us see here what is meant by this a doliolar larva and it exhibits the property of free swimming that's nothing but it can swim and it consists of apical tuft where this apical tuft is also called as apical sensory plate uh, which is it is a sensory part okay which is delicate part and it consists of adhesive pit and here four to five ciliated bands will be present and what is meant by ciliated bands you can see you can see here in the diagram so this will be the diagram of the dolia layer larva and what i have said you it exhibits the properties of free, free swimming and apical tuft will be present which is called a sensory part right so here this sensory part cannot be visible which can be visible only with the help of an electron microscope and here the you know apical tuft will be present which is also called as apical sensory plate and with the to this apical sensory plate apical cilia will get attached in, in the, in the, it is same like in the human beings where you know to our head the hair will get attached right in the same way to this apical sensory plate apical cilia will get attached and this apical cilia plays a major role in catching of the food and also to get settled and to attach it towards the rocks this plays a major role and these are called a ciliated bands all of this uh, you know purple colored dots which have dotted like you know lines which have drawn are known as ciliated bands okay and this is known as lobulated hydrocele this is known as lobulated hydrocele and this is known as mouth and this is called as pharynx this is known as stomach and here this is the right somatocele and this is the left somatocele and this is known as intestine and this is the close to blastopore and this is known as ossicle so by seeing this diagram you can easily understand that the digestive system has also been well developed which starts from the mouth and also end towards the anus and here the Elementary canal has also been well developed. I mean, it indicates the part of the mouth, pharynx, stomach, intestine, and also the anus. So this will be the dolial larva, larva structure. And normally, what happens after this dolial larva completion of this dolial larva stage? What happens is that it exhibits the property of swimming. I have said you. So after the swimming, it will get attached towards a rock. In the in the sea itself, it will get attached towards a rock, and then stalk will be developed later towards its body. And then what happens is that immediately this dolial layer larva will get converted into pentacrinoid larva. Okay. How it becomes into pentacrinoid larva? Because stalk is developed when it gets attached towards a rock. Okay. And now what happens? Then the internal organs which are present in this dolial layer larva. I mean internal organs are nothing but this mouth, pharynx, stomach, intestine. Each and every part of this uh, body of larvae, this type of larvae will get, uh, you know, will get moved towards an angle of 90 degrees okay then what happens is that it becomes into adult so in this way it becomes into adult and undergoes a metamorphosis process so these are the so this will be the end of the types of the larvae of this echinodermata so hope you like this video and and the diagram and also the notes will be given in the whatsapp group you know that the whatsapp group will be given in the description box so with the help of that link you can join us through the whatsapp group and the notes will be given in that group so if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this topic please comment in the comment box the doubts will be clarified immediately thank you